Welcome to section 4, which is a continuation of similar triangles. Today, we are going to be proving triangles similar by this theorem called AA. Now, don't get too nervous. We're not going to be actually writing out proofs like we did in chapter 4. Instead, in chapter 4, if you remember where we were looking at congruent triangles, a lot of times I would give you a picture and just say, are the triangles congruent, yes or no, and by what theorem? That's what we're going to be doing today. You're going to be telling me yes or no, the triangles are similar, and by what theorem? Today, we're only going to learn two theorems, but in the next video, you will learn, or we're going to learn one theorem today. In the next video, you'll learn two more. So we have one objective. We are going to determine if two triangles are similar. So AA similarity says two triangles are similar if two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of another triangle. So let's look at an example. Draw yourself a, two triangles. I have to have two angles of one triangle congruent to two angles of another. So this angle is congruent to that one, and this angle is congruent to that one. So if this is triangle ABC, and this one is GHI, we would say that triangle ABC is similar to triangle GHI by AA. Okay, so if the triangles are similar, I know that all of their angles are congruent. So that would tell me angles C and I are congruent. And I know that all of the sides are proportional. Remember, that's what it means for triangles to be similar. So all you're going to be determining today is do my triangles have two pairs of angles that are congruent? So look at the examples. It says, are the following triangles similar? Explain. Okay, so looking at this first example, I'm going to notice that BE is parallel to CD. Now, I was told this for a reason. It wasn't just for fun. There must be something that I'm gathering out of that. So first, we're going to continue these lines on. And then if I continue this AC, I'm going to notice that AC is a transversal. So I need to look, do I have any special angle pairs? Well, hopefully you notice that this angle and this angle are congruent because they are corresponding angles. So hopefully you remember corresponding and an alternate interior and alternate exterior. These are corresponding. By a similar reasoning, these two angles are corresponding, and they are going to be congruent. So now I have two pairs of angles congruent, so I can say triangle ABE, that little triangle, is similar to ACD by AA similarity. I put the little tilde after um, so that we remind ourselves that we're talking about triangles being similar and not congruent. So let's ch check, our, um, check our statement. Is angle A congruent to angle A? Well, yes, both triangles have that. Is B congruent to C? Yes. Is E congruent to D? Yes. So these triangles are similar. That was supposed to be a check mark. Sorry, it turned out to be an ugly check mark. Okay, right now I would like you to pause the video and try this next example to the right on your own, please. Okay, let's see how we did. So you should have looked for congruent angles. First of all, you have vertical angles right here. Then you're going to notice, because I have parallel lines, you should have looked for this Z. That tells you that these angles are congruent. Similarly, by the backward Z, I know that O is congruent to M. So really, in reality, all three angles are congruent. So in this case, I can say that triangle LMN is similar to L corresponds to P, so the diagonal, M corresponds to O, so P-O-N, by a, a similarity. So hopefully we got that one right. Again, I proved all three pairs of angles congruent, but you only really need two. So hopefully you got that one right. Remember that you could have a different similarity statement than I do, but at least has to be in the same order that mine is. Okay. Now, I would like you to try example three on your own, please. Pause the video, come back when you are finished. Okay, this one was trickier, so let's see how we did. If I look at the triangle on the left, the first thing that I should have done is found this angle. So if I do 180 and I subtract this 90 and I subtract the 32, I get this angle to be 58. The triangle on the right, I'm going to notice that this is also a right angle. 
Again, if I do 180 minus 90 minus 58, I get this angle up here to be 32 degrees. So in this case, I know that the triangle on the left is similar to the triangle on the right. The triangle on the left, I'm going to call CDF. C is 32 degrees, so the triangle on the right, that's going to be D. Then this D is 58, which is going to correspond to E. And then F is 90, which is going to go with F on the right. So, sorry this one you can't read very well, but that said CDF. So CDF is similar to DEF. Now what you may not have noticed is both of those triangles are similar to the big triangle also. So to this triangle as well. So that triangle, the 32 degrees is at C, the 58 is at E, and the 90 is at D. So really all three tri triangles are similar for this figure. So all three are similar by a, a similarity. Again, there's three pairs of angles that are congruent, but we only need to prove two. So if you only saw two, two triangles, that's okay. Okay, so let's look at example number four. It says, suppose B, E, and C, D are not parallel. So let's cross this off. Could the triangle still be similar? Okay, so again, I'm looking at triangle A, B, E, the small triangle, and then I'm looking at A, C, D, the big triangle. We notice that they both have angle A, which is going to be congruent by the reflexive property. But I'm telling you, B, E, and C, D are not parallel. Can the triangles be similar? I'm going to leave this for tomorrow to go over. Right now, you need to make sure that you pause the video, you think about this, and you write an explanation. Yes or no, and why. When you come to class tomorrow, I'm going to be checking to see that you tried this problem. And we will talk about it in class. Remind me. Let's flip to the next page, please. Okay, so this next problem, example number five. It says, a flagpole casts a shadow that is 50 feet long. At the same time, a woman standing nearby, who is 5 feet 4 inches tall, casts a shadow that is 40 feet long. How tall is the flagpole to the nearest foot? Okay, so it says that this woman has a shadow that's 40 feet long. That doesn't really make sense. So change that 40 feet to 40 inches. That makes a little more sense. Okay, so now let's draw ourselves a picture. I have this flagpole, and it has a shadow that is 50 feet long. Then I have this woman nearby, And she is 5 feet 4 inches, and her shadow is 40 inches. We want to know how tall the flagpole is. Okay, so we're going to set up a proportion. We're going to be comparing the object's height to its shadow. If we look first at the woman, she is 5 feet 4 inches tall, and her shadow is 40 inches. Now the flagpole, I don't know the height, but I know that the, f the shadow is 50 feet. Okay, so you're going to notice for the woman that we have mixed units. The woman is 5 feet 4 inches tall. So I need to change the units a little bit. Because I me measured her shadow in inches, I'm going to measure her in inches also. So she's 5 feet 4 inches. If I multiply that 5 by 12, I get 60 inches. And then we still have that 4 inches. So really, she's 64 inches tall, and her shadow is 40 inches. And then we don't know the flagpole's height, but we know that the shadow is 50 feet. And now I use the cross products property. So I get 40x equals, and then I do 64 times 50, and I get 3200. If I divide by 40, I get x equals 80. Now in terms of units, the woman was in inches. The flagpole is in feet, so I know that the flagpole is 80 feet tall. Okay, so now in the next part, it says, suppose that a 58-inch child is standing next to the woman. How long is his shadow? This one I would like you to do on your own. Pause the video and try this one. Good luck. Okay, let's see how we did. You should have gotten the child's shadow to be 36.25 inches. 
you should have set up a proportion between the woman and the child. So the woman is 64 inches tall and her shadow is 40 inches. And then you should have filled in the child on the right hand side. If you got this wrong, please make sure you go back and fix it. I'll be checking tomorrow to make sure that you have this answer correct with the correct work. Okay, so our objective for today was to determine if two triangles were similar using AA. When you come to class, I'm going to be making sure that you have all of the examples completed with the work, including example four. You need to remind me that we're going to go over example four. For the extra examples right now, you are going to do one and two. When you come to class tomorrow, I will be checking these. Good luck.